Hello, everybody. Welcome to Premier League score predictions for round nine. Mikey, it was tense with the Monday night football. It could have swung with a late Crystal Palace goal, but it didn't. So I've taken the win last week, quite handsomely, actually. 10-4. I was Bob on Liverpool 2, Chelsea 1 and Forest 1, Palace 0. You had 1-1. One, one. So it really could have swung in the last minute there. You also had Man United 2, Brentford 1, which was a bob on for you. Therefore, I have closed the gap somewhat. You are now leading 5-3 um, in the weekly battle. And it's only four points in it in the aggregate, Mikey. You are 63-59 up. Welcome to round nine. Yes, thank you, Ben. Yeah, a really bad week for me. Lost the predictions. I think I got 34 fantasy football points and I watched, well, I spent four hours driving up to Ipswich to watch us lose 2-0 against Everton. And of course, I predicted us to win that one as well. There we go. Um, let's get into this week's um, score predictions. In the very, very busy week this, we've Champions League, EFL three game week. We've got Premier League either side of it as well. We'd love you to help us out. Um, get in the comments with your own predictions. Copy and paste the games from the description. You know the scores. Give yourself one point for a correct outcome. Three for a correct result. Give yourself a bonus point if your result has five or more goals. Uh, Mikey, you're going to start with two teams that we've got to give the flowers to. Leicester and Forest. Leicester back-to-back -back wins. Forest are eighth in the Premier League table. Yeah, brilliant start to the season for Forrest. It wasn't a good start to the season for Leicester, though, was it? But very much up and running now after eight points from, from their last five games. They showed loads of character uh, away at Southampton. And then they used their heads and show composure with that set-piece routine at the end. It was a little bit fortunate the way the ball went in. But but I, it, I always like to see a, a rehearsed routine under pressure like that. It's kind of NFL-esque, isn't it? And... When Anote looks a serious player as well. Um, so, yeah, credit to, to Leicester. And hopefully Steve Cooper's winning round some some doubting Leicester fans as well. Forrest got their first home win of the season against Palace, as you mentioned. Um, and they deserved it too. Um, James Ward-Prowse is back from suspension for this game. And Morgan Gibbs-White might be back as well, um, which will benefit them. Derby match uh, under the lights. So... Big atmosphere in this one. I think it's going to be entertaining and I can't pick a winner. So I'm going for Leicester 2, Forest 2. Yeah, I like the draw as well, um, Mikey. Um, hopefully for all those in attendance, it will be entertaining. But I've got to look in the dugouts, Mikey, and say this is going to be yeah. low scoring. So I'll take the draw as well, but I'll take the 1-1. One, one. Um, and we will move on to Aston Villa versus Bournemouth. Incredible win for Bournemouth because fair enough, Arsenal had 10 men, but often 10 men elite teams still win, don't they? And Bournemouth, great job. Another good set play in that game as well. Um, Villa doing their thing, going down to Fulham and getting the win. Villa are in, um, so we're recording on Tuesday night. They're in Champions League action tonight, I think against Bologna. Bologna. Does that help? Yeah, does that help Bournemouth, Mikey? I'm not so sure it does. Um, I think I'm going to back Villa and both teams to score. Um, predictable one, Mikey. I'll go 2 1 Villa. Yeah, I've I've also got Villa to win. I've got 3 1. Um, I I predicted them to lose at Fulham and yeah, hands up, I was I was wrong. I was very wrong in the end, really. Villa just very skillful, really superb tactical manager, but they're also big and physical, aren't they? Um Bournemouth. Excellent result and performance against Arsenal, and they'll they'll definitely carry a threat. But I've got Villa winning this one quite comfortably. And you get to go first for Ipswich this week. It's Brentford versus Ipswich. Yeah, we'll start with Brentford. Their fast starting run is over, but they took the lead again and with a a nice set piece against Manchester United. It helped that Matthias De Ligt was on the side of the pitch when they whip that corner in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've got three wins and a draw at home. They've made the GTEC community stadium a real fortress again this season. Ipswich, two poor performances in a row uh, and results as well. Bit of an injury crisis at the back as well. We mentioned to Anzabi last week being injured. He's going to be out for a while. Jacob Greaves is also missing. Uh, so, and uh, Ben Johnson as well, potentially missing for a few weeks. So, yeah, it's it's 
difficult situation there and Ipswich are potentially going to end up playing the same back four that they had in League One um, a couple of years ago, at least for the second half of League One with Harry Clark at right back and Burgess and Wolfenden at centre-back. But yeah, I, I think this is going to be a difficult game for town as much as I want to predict us to win. I'm going to go for the Brentford narrow 2-1 win. Yeah, um, I suppose that if you've taken the Brentford victory, I don't know, can I take the can I take the draw? Now, I've got to be honest, haven't I? I do think Brentford are going to win this game and then all eyes really for Ipswich on a massive game against uh, Leicester, Leicester in a ridiculous weekend as well, where I think all of the bottom six play each other um, on November the 2nd. So, yeah, maybe the win can come then. I don't. I, I do think Ipswich are going to lose. Um, and there will be nobody happier to be wrong than me, but I'll take a goal off then and it's going to be depressing, but I'll go Brentford 2, Ipswich nil. yuck. Um, Brighton versus Wolves, and this may be the only saving grace here, the um, teams beneath Ipswich, and there are still three of them, have pretty, pretty tricky fixtures. This is one of them, Mikey. Um, it won't come to you as any surprise that I will back Brighton to beat Wolves. Um, Wolves are really bad at the back, aren't they? Their goals against Column is hopeless. And I've got to give them their flowers. They were pretty unlucky against Man City to lose. Should have got a point there. But Man City do what elite teams do and win when the chips are down. Um, sorry, Wolves fans, because I've really been piling against them. But Brighton 3, Wolves nil. Okay. Yeah, I'm also going for a Brighton win, but I'm going for a much more narrow margin. I'm going for just the solitary goal again. Brighton won, Wolves nil. Um, just as I started to doubt them, they pick up two fantastic results back to back. But Danny Welbeck is out for this game and he's been brilliant for this season. So I think it'll be Evan Ferguson through the middle and he's a very different type of striker because Shal Pedro's also missing. One thing that maybe Wolves could cling to is that Brighton have only won 27% of games against teams in the relegation zone since they've been in the Premier League, which That's a isn't a great stat. record. Yeah, isn't a great record. Thanks for to Opta for that one. So maybe something to cling to for Wolves. But yeah, I'm going for the Brighton win. Also, one of those brilliant stats, which is completely unfalsifiable, because can you imagine going back and checking who's in the relegation zone at whatever point Brighton played everybody? So, yeah, absolutely tremendous. I'm not questioning the validity of the wonderful stats that opt to um, hand over to Mikey every week. Blue Monday is proudly brought to you in partnership with our friends at Atwell Solicitors, your ideal legal partner for work on property or business law. Their client care has repeatedly been recognised as outstanding and they are people focused with a plain English approach which sets them apart. They have offices in Ipswich, Colchester and London and to find out more, head to atwells.com. Now, where are you going to go with this one, Mikey? Because it's Man City versus Southampton. We both went for Arsenal to smash Southampton. Didn't happen. I wonder whether the bonus point is going to be played by Mikey. Yeah, so I'm going I'm going for Man City, surprisingly, Ben, by quite a big margin. <laughs> As Man City, they're 31 games unbeaten, Ben, like that. All of those incredible well, Man City teams is that all over got? the year. And, no, that's I think that's that's in the league. They haven't lost in the league since they lost at, at, a season. at Villa last season. And I swear they haven't even been that good, have they? they well, <laughs> by their standards. <laughs> at least and they've also gained 13 points from losing positions and that's how you do it i suppose there's games that are easy for them and then when they have difficult games like the one at wolves they find a way and john stones pops up with a winner erling Haaland is three games without a goal though ben uh, which usually means he's going to score um and he's averaged a goal every 60 minutes against promoted teams i'm really not giving southampton much hope but they've they're starting to find a, find goals i think this is going to be Quite a fun game to watch for the neutral. I'm going Man City 5, Southampton 2. Do you know what? That's a scribble. I was going to say 5-2, incredibly. It's wow. probably never, ever going to happen again. And this is all going to become very tactical because I can't really not play for the bonus point here, can I? If, um, if we're both going to assume Man City are going to win anyway. Shall I take one of your glorious Etihad 4-1s, Mikey? Shall I... Should I steal that from the Mikey playbook? 
um, and throw that in 4-1, um, I will back Man City. Apologies to, you know, Southampton fans. I mean, it would be a hell of a win if they can go there and, and do something or even get a draw. But um, you can understand why neither of us are particularly going with that narrative. Um, Mikey has a distinct advantage over me for Everton versus Fulham because he saw Everton in the flesh last week whilst I was at a wedding in um, near Santa Pod in Northamptonshire, if you've ever been to the racetrack there. Um, I have seen Fulham, though, and it doesn't make it any easier to call because Fulham are very robust, but Everton are improving. I wonder whether this one, we might have to go down the middle I've already had a 1-1, so I will play a Desmond. Everton 2, Fulham 2. Okay, yeah, I think it's it's hard when you see a team play quite well and beat your team. You Then the next week, you kind of, you're going to go for them to win, aren't you? And that is unsurprisingly what I'm doing here, despite me backing Fulham quite a lot this season. I'm going Everton 2, Fulham 1. Uh, I'll hold my hands up. Everton were were good against Ipswich and deservedly won that game. Dominic Calvert-Lewin just, he, he didn't score and he missed a couple of good chances, but he led the line really well. They've got a lot of um, strength and discipline in central midfield and Dwight McNeil was looking like a confident and competent number 10 as well. So yeah, and Fulham are missing Joachim Anderson, um, which is a big blow for them. He's suspended for this game. So yeah, that's why I'm going for Everton to win this one. Uh, Chelsea versus Newcastle is the Scott Parker, Damien Duff. Did Jeremy play for Newcastle as well? The fullback. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, but well. for me, Ben, this this is the Papas Cisse game. It is definitely the Papas Cisse game, if not the Papas Cisse derby. Um, what are you saying, Mikey? You're up first. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm going for a Newcastle narrow win. I don't really, I don't really know why though. I know that's come come out of the <laughs> I'm left surprised field, by this. Um, yeah, both sides have had a little bit of a dip in form. A real goal drought for Cole Palmer. He hasn't scored in his last two. Newcastle four games without a win, and I just look at their their starting lineup for the team last week, and I think I like I like that team, and I can I can see them going to Chelsea and just raising their game against strong opposition here, and I think this is the game where it might click again. And Chelsea might have a, a little dip in form after a couple of disappointing results. But yeah, I'm really not sure on this one. But I thought I'd be different and go for Chelsea 1, Newcastle 2. Mate, that is rogue. And I'm obviously going to back Chelsea and try and take advantage here of possibly being left with a Chelsea home win all to myself. Um, I thought Chelsea were pretty good, actually, against Liverpool, didn't you? From what I saw of it on um, Sunday in the, in the big game um, on the TV... Uh, we always like both teams to score, Mikey. So I will flip reverse, 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 as I love to do. Um, Chelsea 2, Newcastle 1. <laughs> and here comes another vested interest game. Crystal Palace versus Tottenham. And Crystal Palace are performing the world a wonderful service at the moment. And that service is to keep Ipswich Town out of the Premier League bottom three. But I have to say, Mikey, um, and I know it's very difficult not to view everything through the premise of the team you support. But having seen West Ham easily beat Ipswich and then go to Spurs and lose heavily makes me quite high on Spurs and what they can do here at, at Palace. Um, I still think it'll be tight and low scoring, but I've got to back Spurs here. Um, Palace nil, Spurs one. OK, yeah, I'm going for Palace one, Tottenham three. I'm expecting a few more goals in this one. Palace have got a really bad run against Spurs. They've they've won just one of their 18 games against Tottenham or one of their last 18 games against Tottenham. I think it might have been odds on Edwards' debut. I think he scored a couple of goals under Patrick Vieira in that game. Um, but yeah, they were restricted to shots from distance against Forest, weren't they? Never really looked like creating a, a, a big opening in that game. mateta has been on the bench in the last couple of games. I could see him returning and trying to have a battle with, with Romero. Um, but yeah, Spurs, although they are a little bit flaky, aren't they? But they're such a force offensively. And Son looked really good on his return. Remember, he was missing in that defeat against Brighton. Triple step over for that goal. Not even a double, was it? As many as three. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting him to score again in this one in a 3-1 Tottenham win. There you go. Uh, West Ham versus Man United. 
Yeah, I I expected a better showing from West Ham at, at Tottenham, as you probably did after watching watching them cut Ipswich apart before the international break. Um, Kudus gave them the lead, but yeah, they were all over the place defensively. And Kudus is now suspended after getting sent off in that game. He'll be a big miss for them. Um, and although they have won their last two at home against Manchester United, West Ham fans might cling to that. But yeah, United, I apparently they were really good against Brentford and Hoyland's returned um, to play centre forward and apparently Marcus Rashford looked really good. So I could see them scoring goals here at, at West Ham. So I'm going for another 3-1 away win here. West Ham won Manchester United 3. I'm at a bit of a loss on this one. Um, I don't really know which way it's going to go. Um, I think I need to go complete guesswork. Should I play for a bonus point as well? I, do you know what? I think I've done all right back in Manchester United. So I will do that and I'll go for the opposite of what you're saying. No, I won't. I'll go for something more similar, but I'll go for the same margin of victory and just hack off a couple of goals. West Ham nil, Man United two with very little rhyme or reason. Now, just to peel back the curtain before we go to Arsenal Liverpool, Mikey left one on me literally just before we hit record. He said, you're going to be shocked at what I say for that one. Just some mind games in the tunnel, some Roy Keane, Patrick Vieira stuff. That's the type of dirty tactics. Maybe I need to start hitting record earlier and not tell Mikey and um, hit him with some equally dirty tactics. So I think, I think Mikey might be going for an away win here. So I'm going to dive in with the home win. Liverpool's record, mate, is really impressive. Apart from that game against Forest, they've literally won every game this season, yeah. including in the... Um, Champions League, and they're probably going to beat RB Leipzig as well, which is tomorrow night. Um, it's a huge, huge game. I tell you what, if Liverpool do win, what, I think it's like seven point gap they'd have over Arsenal, and you know that starts to get very interesting. But I'm going to back Arsenal. I've been so heavy on Arsenal the past sort of um, couple of seasons, and it's worked out all right. Probably be a tight one. Probably both teams to score. I'll I'll do me two one home win that I like so much. Arsenal two, Liverpool one. Yeah, so this is one of the highest scoring fixtures in in Premier League football. Ben, uh, I'm going for a nil nil, um, just oh. because I think this is. Yeah, I, ha- I don't think I've ever predicted a nil nil on this on this show since I've been doing it. Um, I just think ne- neither side will want to lose. Arsenal are missing Saliba and Erdegaard. I think they'll have Saka back. Liverpool are missing Diogo Jota. I could just see this being a really cagey first half and then neither side really going for it in the second half. Sky Sports won't be very happy if (laughs) if this turns out to be true. Um, They've both got the Champions League distractions, of course, as well um, in in midweek. But yeah, I hope this isn't the scoreline, but uh, that's what I'm going for, nil-nil. Get involved in the comments with your own predictions. If you want to nil-nil in the big um, Sunday TV game, Go for it. Get involved and back up Mikey. A couple of bonus points played for both of us as well, uh, unsurprisingly, in the Manchester City versus Southampton game. Uh, You get your picks in there. Copy and paste from the description. And as usual, one point for an outcome, three points for correct score. And if Manchester City and this mosquito, whatever is flying above my face, um, do wrap in all the goals, bonus points come for five goals or more predictions. Mikey, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week for some more Premier League predictions.